So you're looking for a Milky Way landscape astrophotography setup, but of course you have a budget. So in today's video, we're going to look at different setups at different budgets. And at first, we're just going to look at camera and lens combos. And then I'll talk about tripods and star trackers at the end of the video. And seeing as we're working with a budget, it's best to look at the used market. So we're going to be taking a look at the sponsors of today's video, MPB. It is the best platform to buy, sell and trade photography and videography gear. I've used them so many times over the past seven or eight years so I can attest to their professional service and they just take so much faff and risk out of the used market. So starting with a budget of just £500, one camera which I can very easily recommend is the Canon 60 which can be picked up for £300 to £430 depending on the condition. I actually made an entire video about why I think this is one of the best budget cameras out there for landscape astrophotography. It is a full frame DSLR camera, 20 megapixels, and performs great in low light, even though it's a camera that's over 10 years old now, it's still holding its own against modern full frame cameras. It has amazing color science, it's very durable, very reliable, and it's a bit of a no frills camera. Probably my only gripe would be that it's a little bit difficult to focus on the stars, especially when you compare it to the modern mirrorless cameras where you can practically compose in the dark now. But it's a small caveat for having such an amazing camera at such a low price. And the great thing about Canon DSLRs is that there's a huge range of third party lenses that you can pick up now. And Siemens, we're doing astrophotography, we don't need autofocus. So we can save a bit of money by looking at manual focus lenses like Samyang, which is known as Rokinon in the US. So a great beginner lens is the Samyang 40mm f2.8 manual focus lens, which can be picked up for just £164 to £189, so it's an absolute bargain. It's a very wide lens, you get a lot of the Milky Way in the night sky, it's very good for beginners. And so teaming that with the Canon 60, you're looking at a setup at £493, which is amazing. Personally, I prefer the 24mm focal length, you can get really nice high detail panoramas, and the Samyang 24mm f1.4 just has a much better light gathering capability than the 40mm, but you'll need to stretch the budget a little bit because the lens is about £290, making the combo £598. And I actually started my astrophotography career with the Canon 60 and the Samyang 14 and the 24mm lens. You can check out some of my old vlogs to see the images I captured with this setup and the images that still remain in my portfolio to this day. If you can't decide between the 14mm and the 24mm, maybe you should look at the 20mm f1.8. It's a little bit better in performance than the 14mm, not quite as good as the 24mm, but the price is often in between the 14 and the 24 as well. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds at a medium price. It's currently not available on MPB here in the UK, but if you click for the out of stock lenses, you can then set up an alert. So you'll receive an email notification as soon as one becomes available and you can snipe it straight away. I actually used that feature quite recently to pick up the Voigtlander 50 millimeter F2 lens, which is not often found on the used markets. And it's worth noting that everything you buy from MPB comes with a six month warranty, which is awesome. If for some reason you wanted to go for Nikon over Canon, I would recommend the D750. And again, you can pick up the same Samyang lenses, which I just talked about, because they're also available in the Nikon mount. And the great thing about the D750 is that it exhibits a lot of ISO invariant behavior. If you don't know what ISO invariance is, I made an entire video about it, so you can check that out. But it's a really useful feature to have in landscape astrophotography. But if you wanted a smaller, more lightweight setup, you'd have to look at crop sensor cameras. And I'd particularly recommend the Sony A6000 series of cameras. There's loads of them now. There's the A6000, 6100, 6300, 6500, and so on. And I think apart from the newer 6700, they're all based on the same 24 megapixel sensor. So the cameras are kind of separated by video features and burst rates and maybe a flippy screen or a new menu, but they're all based on the same sensor. So they all have very similar image quality. So you're going to get the same quality of the stills and the low light performance, which is all we really care about in landscape astrophotography. So you can actually just go for the oldest of the lot, the Sony A6000, which can be picked up for a bargain price of 200 to 300 pound, which is insane. And then you compare that with something like the Samyang 12mm F2, which can be picked up for about a 
174 pound making a camera and lens combo of just 378 pound which is pretty damn sweet another exceptional lens for sony crop sensors is the sigma 16 millimeter f 1.4 it's a little bit tighter being a full frame equivalent of 24 millimeters but the image quality is insane the light gathering capability is also pretty amazing and you can pick one of those up for 264 pounds making a camera and lens combo of just 468 pounds which again it's pretty sweet. Now let's say we increase the budget to around about a thousand pound. One thing you can do before looking at different combos is to invest in a star tracker. So go with the combos that I've just talked about, but also add a star tracker. This allows you to take longer exposures of the night sky without getting any star trailing. It does add a little bit of complication because you have to learn how to blend the foreground and the sky together. But if you're going to get serious about landscape astrophotography, you're going to have to learn how to do this at some point anyway. A great budget option for a star tracker is the Move Shoot Move star tracker. It's small, it's very lightweight, it's very portable. But be aware they will be releasing a new tracker soon. <sighs> called the Nomad, which is actually smaller, lighter, and a little bit more powerful, a little bit more accurate. So it might be worth waiting for that. But at the moment, the Move Shoot Move Star Tracker can be picked up with a ball head as well for just about £200, which is pretty amazing. If you wanted something that's a bit bigger and sturdier, that can handle a heavier payload, you'd be looking at either the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro or the Ioptron Skyguider. Pro. They're both excellent in terms of performance. It's very difficult to separate the two. They could both be bought for about £350. My advice would probably be if you're just doing landscape astrophotography, go for the Ioptron. But if you think you're going to dabble in some deep sky stuff with telephoto lenses or a telescope, then go for the Skywatcher. But you can't go wrong with either of them. They're both amazing trackers. If you wanted a camera and lens combo for about a thousand pounds, I'd recommend something like the Nikon D810. And then you can pair that with the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8, which is a great zoom lens for landscape astrophotography. Or you could stick to the Samyang Prime lenses that I've already talked about. And I think most of Yuri Beletsky's portfolio has been built with an Astro modified Nikon D810. So check out those images because they really do speak for themselves. If you wanted to stick with Canon, a combo that's just over a thousand pound would be the Canon 5D Mark IV, along with something like the Tamron 15 to 30 mil, making a combo of 1,138 pound when bought from MPB. The Tamron zoom lens performs really well for astrophotography. It is tack sharp. It can be picked up now for an amazing price, but it is a little bit heavy and a little bit big so be aware of that if you wanted a more lightweight setup at this price range you could go for a little bit more of an expensive sony a6000 camera which i talked about earlier or i'd recommend something like the fujifilm xt3 which can be picked up for around 509 to 749 pound depending on the condition and you can pair that with something like the samyang 12 millimeter f2 it's a manual focus version for around 100 pound which is insane or you can get the newer autofocus version for around 300 pound and another great lens which i already mentioned for the sony crop sensor cameras the sigma 16 millimeter f 1.4 that's also available for fujifilm cameras and i actually made a video where i use this lens with a fujifilm xe4 camera quite recently so do check that out great thing about fujifilm cameras is that they already have a really good response in hydrogen alpha light without astro modifying your camera so you do get a nice little bit of pink in the nebulae in the night sky but let's say we increase the budget now to 1500 pound an interesting combo would be the pentax k1 along with the pentax 15 to 30 mil that lens is pretty much the same lens as the Tamron 15 to 30 that I just mentioned, but for the Pentax mount. And the Pentax K1 has the same sensor as the D810, which I just mentioned. However, it has this astro tracer function, which basically moves the sensor to track the stars so you can get longer exposures of the night sky. It's kind of like having a mini star tracker built inside the camera, which works via GPS. It's a really super cool idea. It doesn't perform quite as well as an equatorial star tracker, but it does save you a lot of time and fuss in setting up a star tracker every time you move your tripod. But now for what I think might be the best bang for buck if you can stretch to this budget, the Sony a7 III. It's an incredibly well-rounded camera for both stills 
and video. And the noise performance is great. It also exhibits ISO invariant behavior, which is very useful in landscape astrophotography. And it's also the camera that I've used to build most of my professional portfolio. You can watch plenty of my videos where I'm using this camera. I now use the Sony a7 IV, but it's really not much of an upgrade. The image quality, I mean, it, the noise performance is a little bit better and the detail is a little bit better, but it's really not that much of a big jump, especially when you're spending an extra thousand pound. I mean, the flippy screen, yeah, it's nice. The new menu is nice. Is it really worth spending twice as much money? I think that's what makes the a7 III just a really sweet deal right now because you can pick them up on MPB for £899 to £999. And then a great affordable lens that you can pair that with is the Samyang 24mm f1.8, which can be picked up from MPB at just £299, which is just insane. It performs surprisingly well for astrophotography and it even has a little button on the side which when you press, it automatically focuses to infinity so you're immediately ready to shoot the stars. And you can even throw in a Samyang 14mm f2.8 lens for another 299 and then you have the Sony a7 III, the Samyang 24 and the Samyang 14mm lens for just £1,500. I think that's an amazing versatile setup that will cover you for most of the situations you'll face in Milky Way and landscape astrophotography. If you'd prefer a zoom lens, you can look at something like the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter f2.8. It also performs really well for astrophotography and can be picked up for around 500 to 600 pound. In terms of Nikon mirrorless full frame, I think the best bang for buck would probably be the original Z6, which can be picked up for 799. And then you can pair that with the Nikkor 20mm f1.8, which performs really well for astrophotography. Nightscape Images made a really good review video about this lens, so check that out if you want to. Although it is a little bit more on the expensive side at around about £850, but it still keeps the combo within that £1,500 budget. As for Canon full frame mirrorless, probably the best bargains are the EOS R and the EOS RP. Big disadvantage for Canon mirrorless is that there's no third party lenses right now, although I think that's going to change very soon. So the only options are the big, heavy and expensive Canon EOS R lenses. Like for example, the 15 to 35 f2.8 is like 1,739 on the used market. But the one good thing about the Canon mirrorless range is that you can get adapters to use the old Canon DSLR lenses. And then you can get an adapter which has a drop-in filter mount. So you can use astrophotography related filters like hydrogen alpha filter or a light pollution filter or some kind of nebula filter. It's just super quick and easy to swap and change them out, which is really cool. And if you needed to increase your budget, you could also trade in some of the gear that you already have. So just follow the link in the video description down below, type in the gear that you're selling, let them know what condition it's in, and you'll get an instant quote online. If you're happy with that quote, MPB will collect the gear from your address at a date and time of your choosing, completely free of charge, which is just super awesome. It just remove so much faff from selling your gear. I've done this myself many times over the past few years. The service is super speedy and professional. You get paid very quickly. And when I was switching from Canon to Sony, for example, I traded in all of my Canon mount lenses and used that money to buy Sony mount lenses from MPB. You save money, it's good for the environment, and everything's just an absolute breeze. But let's say you have a high budget, money is not much of a concern. Well, you don't get much extra after the cameras that I've already listed. Like new cameras might have, you know, flippy screens, some extra burst rate modes and awesome video quality. But as astrophotographers, we don't really need all those bells and whistles. I think where having a high budget really allows you to improve your image quality is in your ability to invest in a star tracker, maybe astro modifying your camera, having a good, high quality, sturdy tripod and having the best lenses. So with Sony, for example, it's difficult to beat the G Master lenses. They are expensive, but they're amazing lenses. The Sony 24mm f1.4, probably my favorite lens of all time. And then the 14mm f1.8, which is probably my second favorite lens of all time. They are expensive, but they're just so incredible in image quality. They're also small and lightweight. 
and yeah they're just hard to beat but one thing i've neglected in this video so far is the tripod and this is one of the biggest four pars that i see in my workshop clients the tripod is just not up to scratch and if it's a little bit windy it doesn't matter how expensive and how amazing your camera and lens combination is you just won't be able to capture decent images because your camera will be shaking and this is very noticeable in landscape astrophotography because you have stars which are pinpoint sources of light and any movement at all is very easily visible and the thing is if you invest in a good tripod and you look after it it will outlive all of your other gear but if you buy a cheap tripod you'll end up buying another one very soon after and then you might buy another one very soon after and you end up spending more in the long run when you could have just had an awesome tripod from the off so i always recommend to people invest a bit of money in a good solid tripod because it goes a long way in landscape astrophotography and your image quality and again it's just going to outlive all of your other gear and last you for years and years to come if you are on a super tight budget and you want a sturdy tripod Look at construction tripods. They might take a bit of modding to put a 3 8 inch uh, thread on the top for your ball head. But at that price, less than £100, you'll struggle to find anything that's more sturdy. It's just a bit big and clunky and difficult to carry around. Now, I'm an ambassador for Benro tripods, so you might call my opinion a little bit biased. But I'm only an ambassador for Benro tripods because I genuinely love their products and after using them for seven or eight years and they still work like they did when I received them on day one, I can highly recommend them because I think they're just amazing quality for good prices. I made a video recently about my favorite setup that I've been using for the past couple of years. It's the Benro Tortoise 34 CLV tripod and it costs £260, which I think is a very reasonable price for the solid sturdy tripod that you're getting and you can guarantee it's going to last you many, many years. The head I use is an Acrotec two-way head, which is a bit expensive. I paid around £400 for it, but there are more affordable options like the Leo Photo and Sunway Photo two-way heads. But just keep in mind, you want to save a bit of your budget for a good tripod. You're going to save yourself money in the long run, and you're going to have good image quality from the off. And lastly, one more essential that you need to keep in mind in your budget is a head torch. It's an absolute essential in this genre of photography. My personal favorite is the Petzl Actic Core, which I've been using for probably like five years now. It's super comfortable. It has a rechargeable battery. And I love that it has a red light function. All astrophotographers will look for head torches with the red light function because it protects your night vision. But it also has a low powered white function at just six lumens. And I love using in this because I can not only see my immediate foreground but I can also see into the dark distance. If you have a bright white head torch you can only see the immediate foreground. You can't see into the dark. You have to turn your head torch off and then wait for your eyes to adjust to the dark. So I love this six lumen low power mode with the Petzlactic and it also means that the battery lasts like 130 hours which is insane. And these can be picked up for just £50. And like I said, mine's been going for like five or six years now so that's less than £10 a year which is way cheaper than Adobe Lightroom. <laughs> so I hope this video has been useful to you. Obviously I'm not knowledgeable on every camera brand and every lens that's out there so I'd love you guys to get in the comments down below and let me know what budget combos I might have missed out, what your favorite gear is and what lenses have surprised you. I really love it when the community comes together and shares their knowledge and experience. It's beneficial for all of us. So hit subscribe if you haven't already and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.